This is Radio Ukraine International with the weekly program Doing Business, hosted by Rodion Drzeznevsky and produced by Konstantin Lavrentyuk. Doing Business covers current economic developments in and concerning Ukraine and gives topical information as well as immediate and longer-term economic forecasts. It is what we think might give you food for thought and help you see Ukraine through the economic angle. Today our program is dedicated to the topic of Ukrainians in Sweden. From the point of view of a potential immigrant, Sweden is a very attractive as the country for permanent residents. There are high standards of living, decent social norms, a strong economy, well-developed institutes of democracy, an effective and high-quality healthcare system, and many other advantages. That is why Sweden attracts many people who wish to settle there. Sweden's population is about 10 million. It is multi-ethnic and multicultural, and it is generally required that everyone treat others as tolerantly as possible. Living in another country is always difficult and worrisome in terms of its language, culture, lifestyle and traditions. Immigration, in fact, it's not as easy as it might seem at first glance. There are no perfect places. However, this doesn't exclude the fact that Sweden is exactly the country where people from all over the world, including Ukrainians, are striving to move. We will talk about all the aspects of life in Sweden with Alexandra Harlan, who moved to Sweden back in 2012. She kindly answered my questions. The first thing that we have to do is just to represent our guest, and it would be better if you represent yourself. So will you tell us briefly about yourself? I mean, what's your education, career background, and what did you do here in Ukraine before living for uh, Sweden? Yeah, so my name is Alexandra Harlan, um, Karlan, as they pronounce it in Sweden. I'm uh, 37 years old. I'm a lawyer, Ukrainian lawyer. I studied in Kyiv National Trade Economic University. And uh, then I've been working for lawyer since that. Um, the different companies uh, I had experience in working with the TV as well. I was the counsel for uh, Stavik Schuster TV show Svoboda Slova. So for two years, and then I got a job in Philip Morris. It's a cigarette producer. Uh, it's an international company. I got a job in 2012, and I was uh, really happy about my job. I liked it. And as a job in all international, multinational companies, you get kind of like a team spirit, company spirit. You kind of uh, really into your job, and um, you get a lot of time, like it's part of your life. That's how I get uh, my first assignment in Sweden. So in lots of big companies, you have an opportunity to try to work abroad as part of this called uh, assignment. It could be long term or short term. And in my case, it was a short term assignment for nine months. Our Nordic uh, branch, uh, uh, they needed a person, the lawyer for nine months to cover their assignment for their lawyer. So their Danish lawyer, mm -hmm. he went to Japan. And uh, so they were looking uh, for a lawyer to work there for nine months. And it's, uh, for such companies like Philip Morris, it's very easy because you don't really need to be a Swedish lawyer or Japanese lawyer or a U.S. lawyer because there is always um, some kind of uh, areas uh, of law that uh, actually use international practices uh, or international laws as well as internal company policies like marketing, for instance, and then you get some few rules that you need to apply based on the current situation on the market. So if you had experience in this industry, that it would be really easy to adjust to a new environment. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I got uh, my assignment uh, in Sweden. I never thought it would be Sweden. I was like, my boss was like, would you ask me if I want to go for assignment? I said, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. It was a really good opportunity. But for uh, how long were you working in Philip Morris before leaving for Sweden? Three years. But there is no any guarantee term that you, after which you can get the assignment. Because in my case, we had a lawyer that had to go to assignment, but she got pregnant and said that she she's kind of hesitates to leave country. She would like to stay in Ukraine and we already hired the lawyer to cover her. So 
we like got lots of lawyers and my boss like yeah how to resolve okay someone needs to go to his side man Sasha you go <laughs> and mostly you communicate in Swedish or in English I speak Swedish so I speak Swedish to mm -hmm. Swedish people I find it uh, easier are there any think... tests that you have to pass to prove your language skills no, not for me, because basically I work in English, so I speak Swedish, I work in English, so that's fine. Are there any jobs that the most in demand for Sweden? Like probably there are Ukrainians who are looking for some job exactly in Sweden. What would you probably recommend them to do? Or probably there are some specific professions that are that strongly in demand. IT is always strongly in demand, unfortunately, right. or fortunately, as everywhere, and IT, 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 and uh, it's true. So if you want to be hired from abroad, uh, it's definitely IT, and it's a green light for IT, it's true. And uh, Sweden is hiring all over the world, from China, from India, from Pakistan, uh, a lot of people came from Russia and Belarus, uh, a lot of people came with the IT background, and that's definitely in demand, uh, I would say. Lawyers, unfortunately, no. But I know people who had another background, so like in the marketing and in sales, uh, mm -hmm. who also kind of got job offers there. You're listening to Radio Ukraine's weekly program, Doing Business. What about bureaucratical problems? Did you have any of them with entering Sweden and applying for a, a job there? Well, uh, as far as uh, I moved uh, there for the Swedish branch of Ukraine, of our international company from Ukraine uh, to Sweden, so they actually hired a certified agency and uh, mm -hmm. the job permit I got, I got it like in two weeks and I still thought, well. Uh, so the company solved all, all the issues. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. so they, they hired an agency and they they applied, they got a job permit and the, the only thing I had to do is come to the embassy and uh, take a photo and uh, then uh, pick my card, the, the residence permit. And I said it was kind of, it was not really smooth because the uh, Swedish embassy like had only one day a week that they accepted those visitors and I was like, really? But if you apply by yourself, it might take up to one year to get the job permit. So that is a problem. I think, I don't know why it's done like that. Probably it's so to neglect the amount or decrease the amount of people who are applying for job in Sweden. But uh, Swedish bureaucracy is a special thing. But did you know the language? I mean, Swedish language no, no, before no. learning? No, 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 it was only English. Yeah. As far as I know, Sweden is famous for its high level of knowing English language. Is it really true? Yes, it's true. It's true. All Nordics are very good in, the, in English. And uh, the secret is that they, uh, they watch all the movies in English. They really have a good English. However, if you go to some rural areas and then you basically want to kind of make friends or you, you, you kind of... You start talking to Swedish people in English on a daily basis uh, that uh, is not connected to their job. They kind of might be really hesitant. Some and as well as uh, so, the basic English is really really good. But if, uh, for instance, uh, you somewhere in the rural area and you have a child in the kindergarten and you want to discuss his her progress in or in school in English, that might be problematic. Mm -hmm. Or if you were in a hospital, so yes, it's, sometimes you might meet people who are not so comfortable speaking English mm -hmm. uh, on an advanced level, but basic level, it's really good. How did your family react to your suggestion to uh, leave? Uh, well, my mom was really happy. So, oh. uh, and I didn't have a boyfriend at that time, so there was no problem at all. So. <laughs> you hadn't and, visited uh, Sweden before? No, really? no, okay. no. That was my first time. Actually, it was really interesting because uh, I never thought about Sweden. And uh, usually you got assignment in Philip Morris. Or you, you could get assignment in Philip Morris uh, into Lausanne, in the headquarter. And then mm -hmm. probably some markets in the region. Uh, we had like uh, Eastern Europe, not Western Europe. And then they said like, or maybe it could be uh, Latin America or... And it's like Sweden. I was like, okay, 
And I had a call with my Swedish boss, future boss, and uh, we liked each other. And she said, like, yeah, sure, Alexandra, come. And uh, my first visit to the Nordics. Nordics is um, Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. What about Finland, so it, by the way? No, they are not in no? the Nordics. Uh, oh, that's surprising. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're geographically there, but uh, culturally, mm-hmm. and they have another language as well. So uh, Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish, uh, it's basically the same language. It was the same language a long time ago. And um, it developed in the, uh, each of the languages developed in different ways, but uh, they do understand each other and uh, the basic of the language is the same, but not the pronunciation. You're listening to Radio Ukraine's weekly program, Doing Business. So you're there, yours in Sweden, just I, I'm trying to imagine the first year days there. How did you solve your uh, housing problem actually as far as i got like a uh, assignment it was i had an apartment uh, paid by my right. company and it was really e- easy so everything was covered uh, and uh, it's funny because my experience in sweden is a little different because when i i just moved to sweden i thought it just kind of um, wonderland partially because i had the right job and they already like accepted me oh alexandra she's a lawyer yeah she's from ukraine but she's our lawyer so it's fine and partially because uh, all the paperwork was uh, solved by my company and uh, after a year and a half i had to reapply for my job permit and then to find another job i wanted to have a permanent job so i had to find it by myself and then i actually faced the new reality of sweden <laughs> So then uh, I didn't have to uh, look for an apartment that, that time because I moved to my husband-to-be and he had an apartment. So it was a rental apartment, was, but we had a place to stay. But right. I had to find a job and um, it took me like one year, actually. So I started even before my contract expired. So in advance ahead of, and it took me like one year to find a job and uh, probably like three months to get the first uh, in job interview. I got another, I got the job offer actually, um, maybe six, uh, seven months after I started looking for a job, uh, but it was in another city and we didn't really want to move there because my partner, he had a um, job in the other part of uh, Stockholm. So, and that was another city that was north up north and he worked uh, down south in the southern part of Stockholm. So yeah. So all, all the time working. you lived and work in Stockholm, right? Correct. Yeah. Me, right? yeah. Oh, okay. You said that you were looking for a job. I mean your second job in Sweden. What can you say about relationships between employers and employees there in Sweden? Well, the attitude to, to employees is very good, actually. So the re- relationship is much better, like uh, between em- employers and the employees. It's much better in Sweden than in Ukraine. You have mm-hmm. a better life-work balance, uh, so you be- have better rights as employee. You have uh, still powerful trade unions. And in general, the relationship between manager, you know, and the subordinate, it's, it's not like in Ukraine. They don't make you a favor by giving you this job. You do a job, you exchange your services, you, like provide your services in exchange of money. And they, they expect you. You don't, need, you don't need to have any career ambitions or to, I don't know, work your ass off uh, just to show that you're better than your colleague. Yeah. Right. So you just do your job. You do it good, good enough. And that's fine. And the um, attitude to Ukrainians is kind of, um, it's just general uh, to for- foreigners. The Swedish don't really like foreigners. It's everywhere, like in Europe, I think. It doesn't matter. They don't have anything personal to you. Just don't, they just don't really like foreigners. They might right. like you then if they know you better. So, oh, you're a good guy. We like you. But in general, they will be suspicious. There is one factor, probably it's misconception, that they keep their privacy that much. And I've heard there is something was said that they don't say hello to their neighbors just because they are not into small talk and so on. Is it really that true that they're pretty humble and it's far not the same what we have in the United States or somewhere else? They will say hi to neighbors, but uh, definitely not in the small talk. So 
It depends. If you want to, if you have a talkative neighbor, especially the pensioners, and they retire, then they kind of like to talk to you. That's fine. But you don't have to do this. But uh, yeah, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it would be like that. No one expected you to say hi to your neighbors. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it might be you actually can meet your colleague somewhere on the street and you just pretend that you don't know him or her and that they do the same. Because yeah, yeah you kind of work together, but you're not obliged to do small talk or say hi to each other. So that's fine. You're listening to Radio Ukraine's weekly program, Doing Business. I would like to ask you about apartments. If it's not a secret, approximately how much do you pay for it? Are there any additional housing costs that you have to pay for? We bought our apartment last year. Right. It's a, I have a mortgage. Me and my husband, we have a mortgage. And uh, so we pay, uh, the mortgage depends uh, on uh, how much you borrowed from the bank. And so right. you have to pay uh, approximately one or two percent of the mortgage. So you have to pay back the body of the loan. And then you pay also percent uh, the interest rate. Interest rate is about 1.5 percent to two percent so it depends and then you also pay for like monthly allowance that you pay to cover housing uh, expenses to the it's called union so if you buy a house uh, or apartment sorry apartment is probably uh, part of the um, union so the the legal entity is it's like um something that we had uh, in the soviet union it's called cooperative people like uh, they owe everything, the old apartment, all the uh, territory and the area of the buildings of the the whole building there. Right. And then they share the costs for the maintenance. And then they also include some uh, costs that uh, uh, for utilities, for if, if you have uh, like usually garbage, uh, some recycling. We have a recycling station in the basement mm -hmm. and then some common areas like uh, room for uh, bicycles, room for uh, baby trolleys uh, and uh, and uh, like uh, storage. We have mm -hmm. like a small storage and they divide it on small ca like cages where you can actually store your clothes that you don't use, no right. furniture or something like that. Uh, so and that is uh, quite expensive. We pay 450 euro per month. It includes uh, everything except of um, electricity and the warm water. And this is basically like we have a three room apartment. The price depends on the how many rooms you have and uh, then uh, also how old uh, um, your uh, building is. From housing issues, let's move to food and transportation. What would you say about the price? The food you can actually choose uh, uh, where to buy and uh, for family of two, a minimum of 500 euro per month, five to 800 euro per month. So it will go only for food. And uh, not without restaurants, maybe some takeaway. 500 Once. euros, that's just like budget supermarkets? The budget like. supermarket. So up to, a, no, like I think we spend 800 uh, euro per month. Just the advice, kind of recommendation, piece of advice, let's say that for newcomers, how to save the money when you just come to Sweden? Uh, yeah. Is there any way that you can use? Uh, to cook at home, buy food. Uh, there is a uh, budget supermarkets like Lidl or Willis. They are really good quality of food, but they are much cheaper. Sign up for membership. Membership is always a better price uh, everywhere. And then you can also collect bonus. And uh, yes, that's, uh, that's how you do it. And the price is, yeah, it's more expensive. The price is much higher than in, in Ukraine. The food is, uh, it's, not, it's not cheap. It's not cheap, but you can manage. Yeah, you can manage, I would say. Um, for instance, like a potato costs like uh, one euro per kilo bread around two euro per uh, a loaf of uh, bread mm -hmm. and then milk uh, euro 20 cents per mm -hmm. liter well you can find for 90 cents probably but what about the quality is it the same uh, as in ukraine as, or it's, no, worse? it's better it's better, better. quality okay. of food is better the only thing is that they don't have really this uh, anything like ukrainian tvorog polish uh, cottage cheese Mm -hmm. which they call Tvorok, just direct uh, translation, <laughs> directly copy-paste from Polish. There is the question that I cannot not ask, let's say. So recently there was the football tournament and Ukraine defeated Sweden. What yeah. was the reaction of media? 
did they really discuss all that stuff? Because it caused a huge fuss here in Ukraine. Was it the yeah, same? Swedes are not really so much into football, and uh, right. yeah, they were like kind of they supported the, the Swedish football team. There are so few people like in the t-shirts, and uh, people sat like in the bars and watched the uh, tournament. But uh, okay, but they lost. They lost. Well, that's fine. <laughs> kind of uh, it happened. So I must say that uh, Sweden was very glad uh, when they won uh, against the Polish team and uh, got mm-hmm. to meet Ukraine because. Uh, they were not really they were reluctant to meet the uh, belgium team that uh, probably Poland, yeah, yeah uh, played uh, against and they said like yeah but belgium they are they better than ukrainian so that's uh, yeah. meet ukrainian so that uh-huh. that happens so i mean S- swedish people are very kind of um, they easy going they are not really focused on any uh, you know bad thing too much or good thing too much it's life you know it happens You're listening to Radio Ukraine's weekly program, Doing Business. As far as I know, they don't sell alcohol in the supermarket. There is another store where you can buy it. Is it really true or it's Yeah, not yes, like... it's true. It's um, a government monopoly, actually. When Sweden joined the European Union, they asked for two exemptions from uh, the treaty is to have the government monopoly because it's right. forbidden by EU uh, treaty and they still have the system below it. It's a government monopoly that um, sells alcohol and uh, you have to go to store to buy alcohol. Uh, you can buy light beer up to 3.5% alcohol in uh, the supermarket, but that's all. It uh, works uh, half day on Saturday and uh, it closed on Sundays. So uh, do they really keep this healthy lifestyle? in Sweden. Uh, yeah, they do. Like to go to gym, it's uh, basically like a second to work and um, uh, like you don't have membership in the gym. It's basically like, who are you? People are really keen on running and cycling. This is basically. So you have to cycle, cycle to city. Into city is it good work. infrastructure for cycling yes, there? It, yes, it's a good. It's really good. And in most of the office uh, buildings, they have a shower in the first floor. So you can uh, take a shower after you cycle to work and wow. you park your bicycle so it's really nice there i mean and there is a special lines for bicycles so you don't really have to cycle on the p- pedestrian area <laughs> the focus is actually to make driving as much expensive as possible plus parking in the city the center city. is very expensive i'm not into running yeah. or cycling yet but i already got my bicycle so i will at least try to <laughs> cycle to work maybe <laughs> The world rightly considers Sweden to be a country where the nation of immigrants is steadily taking its roots. It is one of the leading countries in the whole European Union, judging by the number of submitted requests for political asylum. About 20% of the total population living in Sweden are foreign citizens. Immigrants, including Ukrainians, are a powerful tool influencing the country's demography, culture and mentality. The Swedish standards of living do not practically differ from those in other EU countries. The major exception is the progressive income tax, one of the highest in Europe, which could vary from 30 to 55%. It is actually due to taxes that social capitalism flourishes in the country, which is so much said and written about. And that was the end of the program about Ukrainians in Sweden. That was Ready Ukraine's weekly program Doing Business, hosted by Rodion Zhiznevsky and produced by Konstantin Lavrentyuk. Tune in every Wednesday for more.